Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe what's meant by continuous and discontinuous variation, giving examples of both. You should then be able to calculate standard deviation. In the last video, we saw that differences between organisms are called variation. And variation can be due to genetics, the environment, or a combination of both. Now we can divide variation into two different categories. These are discontinuous variation and continuous variation. Discontinuous variation is also called discrete variation. With discontinuous variation, a feature can only have specific values with no in-between values, and we generally use a bar chart to represent features showing discontinuous variation. A good example is blood groups in humans. Human blood groups fall into four possible values. These are A, B, A, B, and O. Discontinuous features are often controlled by a single gene. Now, features showing continuous variation can have any value within a range. Scientists call this a continuum of values between the smallest value and the greatest value. We normally represent continuous variation using a histogram overlaid with a curve. A good example of continuous variation is height in humans. Now, I should point out that the histogram I'm showing here is only representative since the actual numbers depend on the group being sampled. While some humans are extremely short or extremely tall, other humans lie on a range between these values. Features that show continuous variation are usually controlled by several genes working together, and scientists call these polygenes. For example, around 80% of the variation in human height is genetic. The remaining variation is due to environmental effects, for example diet. Now, when we plot continuous variation like this, scientists call this a normal distribution curve. The mean, median, and mode are the same, and are the measurement under the peak of the curve. And we can see that 50% of the values are less than the mean, and 50% are greater. Notice that the normal distribution curve is symmetrical about the mean. Now, a very large number of features demonstrate a normal distribution like this. For example, the length of cells in a bacterial species, the mass of animals in a population, or the number of leaves on a tree. All of these demonstrate a normal distribution. Now, the spread of a normal distribution gives us an idea of the amount of variation. The normal distribution on the left is tightly clustered around the mean. However, the normal distribution on the right has a greater spread around the mean, showing a greater level of variation. Now we can quantify the spread of the data by calculating the standard deviation. I'm showing you here the equation for standard deviation. Standard deviation has the symbol lowercase sigma. Don't panic if you're not confident with maths. Standard deviation looks complicated, but it's actually a series of steps that you need to follow. I'm showing you here the diameter of nine different snail shells. We call the value being measured x. So in this case, x is the diameter of the snail shell. First, we calculate the mean of all the values of x. We call the mean value x bar. The mean is 16 millimeters. Next, we subtract the mean from each value of x like this. We call this column x minus x bar. Now we square each value of x minus x bar. Next, we add up all of these values. We call this the sum of x minus x bar squared. The symbol is called capital sigma, and it means sum of. Now we divide this value by the total number of values minus 1. We have 9 values, so we divide by 8. 40 divided by 8 equals 5. And finally, we take the square root of this value. The square root of 5 is 2.24, which is the standard deviation. Going back to our graphs, 68% of all our values lie within one standard deviation of the mean, and 95% of values lie within two standard deviations of the mean. So the smaller the standard deviation, the more tightly clustered the values are around the mean, and the less variation there is in the data. Okay, so hopefully now you can calculate standard deviation. 